Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to be coding the game Snake using Java. So what you see here is the final result of this tutorial. And to start the game, you just need to tap on any arrow key. And you can see we have the snake moving and whenever it touches the food, which is in red, it will grow its body by one segment. So the goal of the game is to grow the snake's body without colliding into the walls and if you collide into the walls or if the snake collides into its own body the game is over okay so we're going to be coding this game in java using the built-in graphics library so before we begin i just want to quickly mention that i am working on a new coding tutorial series where i teach you how to make games in java so currently i'm working on tic-tac-toe and snake and there will be more tutorials in the future. I also have tutorials in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for Doodle Jump, Breakout, Flappy Bird, Space Invaders, Wordle, Sudoku, 2048, Candy Crush, and Snake as well. So if you're interested and you want to stay up to date on new tutorials, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And you can also find this list on kennyipcoding.com. All right, let's begin. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. If you want to learn how to set up Visual Studio Code with Java, I have a video on that and I'll link it in the description below. All right, so let's create a project. So Control Shift P, Java Create Project and No Build Tools. I'm going to create this on my desktop and let's call it Snake. All right, now I have my project folder. Inside the source folder, we have this app.java file. So let's open that. And the first thing I'm going to do is delete this line. All right, so now let's create a window for our game. So what I need to do is import javax.swing. Okay. And then in our main function, let's define a few variables. So int board width is going to be 600 pixels and int board height and we'll set that to board width so board height will also be 600 pixels all right let's create our window so jframe frame is new jframe and let's give it a title so we'll just call it snake let's make the frame visible so frame dot set visible we'll set this to true frame dot set size we're going to set it to board width board height so this is going to be a window that is 600 pixels by 600 pixels let's do frame dot set location relative to null so this is going to open up the window at the center of our screen frame dot set sizable we're going to set this to false and then frame dot set default closing operation we're going to set this to jframe dot exit on close so this is going to make it so that the program will terminate when the user clicks on the x button on the window all right let's run our program and you can see we have a window so now that we have our window what we need now is a j panel so that we can draw our game so instead of creating a J panel here, I'm going to create a new class that will inherit the J panel. So over here in our source folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it snake game Java. So now we have our snake game file and let's add some import statements. So import Java .awt asterisk import java.awt.event.asterisk import java.util.arraylist so this is going to be used for storing the segments of the snake's body import java.util.random so this is going to be used for getting random x and y values to place our food on the screen and finally, import java x.swing.asterisk. 
Okay, so those are all the import statements that we need. So in our class, I'm going to extend the J panel. So basically, we are inheriting here. And for those of you who don't know what that means, we are creating a new class called snake game that will take on the properties of J panel. So basically, it's a version of J panel with more things that we can add. All right, so now for our snake game, let's create some variables for the width and height. Let's also create a constructor, snake game. And this is going to take in two parameters. So board width and board height. So here I'm going to do this dot board width is equal to board width. And this dot board height is equal to board height. So the reason why we need the this keyword is to distinguish the two board widths. So we have one as a parameter and another as a field or a member of the snake game class. So to distinguish the two, we say this dot board width, meaning the board width that belongs to this class. So now we're going to take the board width and board height and set preferred size to new dimension this dot board width, this dot board height. Let's set the background of the panel to color dot black. And then we're going to go back to our app.java file. And we're going to create an instance of the snake game. Snake game is equal to new snake game. And we need to pass in the two parameters. So board width and board height. And then we're going to take the frame and add the snake game. So if I run the program, you can see we have our snake game, which is a J panel inside our frame. Now there's an issue and that is we set the size of our frame to 600 by 600. What that includes is this title bar over here where it says snake. Essentially, this panel is actually not 600 by 600 pixels. It's a little less than that because of this title bar. So to resolve this issue, we just need to do frame.pack so that it will place the J panel inside the frame with the full dimensions. Okay. And we don't really need the sidebar anymore. So I'm just going to collapse that. So here you can see our snake game. It is 600 by 600 pixels. And what we need to do is we need to define a tile size. So I'm going to define it as 25 by 25. So that is the size of one square. And basically we are partitioning the 600 pixels into 24 columns and 24 rows so that whenever we move the snake, it moves over one tile or one square instead of the exact pixel number. So it is 25 pixels by 25 pixels. So when the snake moves over to the right, it should move over 25 pixels. And if it moves over to the right again, it will move over 50 pixels and then 75 pixels, 100, 125, and so on. So here I'm going to define a tile size and set it to 25 pixels. And so we're going to create a new class to keep track of all the X and Y positions for each tile. So let's create a new class. And actually I'm going to create it as a private class so that only the snake game can access this class. So private class tile int X and int Y. And then let's create a constructor. So tile int X int Y. This dot X is equal to X and this dot Y is equal to Y. So when we draw a tile on the game screen, we need to specify an X, Y, width and height. So over here, we have a width and height of 25 pixels by 25 pixels. But what is the X and Y coordinate? Well, we scaled everything by 25 pixels per tile. So if you look at our window here, we have one, two, three, four, five in the X direction and one, two, three, four, five in the Y direction. So 
The x and y coordinates start at the very top left corner, which is 0, 0, and the bottom right corner is 600 by 600. So where is the snake's x and y position? It will be 5, 5, so those are the x and y coordinates, but because we have a scale, the tile size, meaning each tile has a width and height of 25, to physically place this snake in this position on the screen, we need to multiply the x and y coordinate by 25. So this will be 5 times 25 and 5 times 25. So the x and y would be 5, 5, but physically, pixel-wise, it will be 125 pixels, 125 pixels. Okay? So I'm going to create a tile snake head variable. And then within our constructor, I'm going to do snake head is equal to new tile. And we need to specify an x and y coordinate. So I'm just going to use 5, 5 as the default starting place. So now that we have our tile object, we need to draw this. So I'm going to create a function public void paint component. And it's going to take in graphics G, which is used for drawing. And I'm going to do super dot paint component G and draw G. So we need to define a draw function. So public void draw graphics G. And for the snake, I'm going to set the color of the pen to color, not green. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. So G dot fill rect. We need to specify the X and Y position. So snake head dot X snake head dot Y tile size for the width and tile size for the height. All right, so now we run our program. So you can see we have a green rectangle that is the snake head and the width is 25 pixels and the height is also 25 pixel. Now something here looks off and that is the X and Y coordinate. So where we drew the snake, it should actually be somewhere over here, right? Because we specified 5, 5, we meant 5 units to the right and 5 units down. Now the thing here is, when we passed in the values for the x and y coordinates, we literally passed in 5, 5. So the fill rect recognizes that as 5 pixels to the right and 5 pixels down. So to get it 5 units down and 5 units to the right, we need to multiply the x and y by the tile size. So over here, I'm going to do snakehead.x times tile size and snakehead.y times tile size. So now if I run the program again, you can see our snake is over here, five units to the right and five units down, okay? And physically on the screen, it is five times 25, so 125 pixels to the right and 125 pixels down. And just to make it easier for you to visualize, I'm going to draw some grid lines here. So for int i is equal to zero, i less than board width divided by tile size, i plus plus. So board width is 600 and tile size is 25. So 600 divided by 25 gets you 24. So we have 24 rows and 24 columns of squares. So for each one, I'm going to draw a line. So g dot draw line i times tile size, 0, i times tile size, board height. And let's draw another line. So g dot draw line, 0, i times tile size, board width, i times tile size. So whenever you draw a line, you need a starting point and an end point. So that's why we have x1, y1, and x2, y2. The first line here, we are drawing vertical lines. So the y's will be from 0 to the height, and x will change. So these x1 and x2, they will move together. And basically, we need to change the x value so that it goes from left to right. Now for the second line, we are drawing horizontally. 
So it's going to start from the x position of 0 to the board width. And we need to draw line by line up and down. So we are changing the y coordinate. OK. So now if I run our program, you can see we have our grid lines. All right, so now that we have the snake in the proper position, let's draw the food. So the food is also going to be a tile. So here I'm just going to separate the two. So this is the snake. And for the food, we have tile food. And inside the constructor, I'm going to create a new tile for the food. So food is equal to new tile. And let's just set the x and y to 10, 10. All right, so now that we have a tile representing the food, let's draw it on the panel. So here, I'm going to draw the food before the snake. So food goes here, and I'm going to do g dot set color, color dot red. And similarly, I'm going to do g dot fill rect foo.x times tile size, foo.y times tile size. And for the width, it's going to be tile size. And the height is also going to be tile size. All right, now let's run our program. And you can see we have our food here. And it is 10 units to the right and 10 units down. OK. All right, so now that we have our food, let's create a function that will randomly place the food on the screen so that the x and y position isn't always 10, 10. So to randomly place the food, I need to create a random object. So over here, I'm going to do random, random. And then down here, I'm going to create a random object. So random equals new random. And then I'm going to call the place food function. And then down here, let's define our place food function. And basically, this function will just randomly set the x and y coordinates of the food. So food.x is going to be random the next int of board width divided by tile size. And food.y is going to be random the next int of board height divided by tile size. So board width and height are both 600 pixels. And tile size is 25. So this will give us 24. So the x position will be a random number from 0 to 24. And the y position will also be a random number from 0 to 24. All right, so now if I run our program, we expect the food to be placed in a random location over here. And then if I rerun it again and again, you can see the position is changing every time. OK. All right, now that we have the snake and the food, we need to make the snake move. And before we make the snake move, we need to create the game loop. So when we make the snake move, we are changing the x and y position of the snake. And to reflect that on the screen, we need to redraw the panel so that we draw the new rectangle with the updated x and y positions. For that reason, we need a game loop so that the game loop will constantly redraw the frames. So to create the game loop, we need a timer. So over here, I'm going to add a new section for variables, and I'm going to call it game logic. And I'm going to create a variable for the timer, and we're going to name it game loop. And then down here, I'm going to assign game loop to new timer. And over here, we need to tell the timer how often it should run. So let's say 100 milliseconds. So 100 milliseconds is one tenth of a second. And we need to tell the timer what to do every 100 milliseconds. So we're going to place the keyword this over here. And then up here, I'm going to implement action listener. So now you can see we have an error here, and that is we need to add a new method when we implement the action listener. 
So down here, we need to create an action performed method and override it. So over here, let's just get rid of this. And then what I'm going to do is call repaint. So every 100 milliseconds, we are going to call this action performed, which will repaint and repaint basically calls draw over and over again. Okay. So over here, I'm going to do game loop dot start. So now if I run a program, you can see we are drawing over and over again, but you don't really see a difference because we didn't make the snake move. So it is drawing the same frame over and over again every 100 milliseconds. All right, now that we have our snake and we have our food and we have our game loop, we need to make the snake move. So just as a recap, the top left is 0, 0 and the bottom right is 600, 600. So it's 600 pixels by 600 pixels, or it's 25 tiles down and 24 tiles to the right. Okay, so where is the snake? The snake is five tiles down and five tiles to the right, or 125 pixels down, 125 pixels to the right. So if we want to move the snake, we need to specify a velocity and velocity is the change in position over time. So just now we created a game loop and the loop runs every 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, we want the snake to move in some direction. So for velocity X, we have negative and positive. Negative is going to the left and positive is going to the right because if you're going to the left, you're going towards zero. And if you're going to the right, you're going towards 600 pixels. And velocity Y is up and down. So negative velocity Y means you're going up towards zero and going down means you're going towards 600 pixels. So when we're drawing our square, when we update the X and Y position by one, we are moving the snake one tile over. Okay. So if I want to move to the right, velocity X will be positive one. And whenever we draw our snake, each frame, we are moving it over one tile at a time. Okay. All right. So over here, I'm going to specify a velocity X and a velocity Y. And then over here, I'm going to set velocity X to zero and velocity Y. Let's just make it one. So if velocity y is one, it's going downwards. Now within our game loop over here, I want to call a move function that will update the x and y position of the snake. And after that, we will repaint. So up here, I'm going to define the move function. And for the snake head, I'm going to do snakehead.x plus equal velocity x and snakehead dot y plus equal velocity y. All right, so this is going to be called every 100 milliseconds and we are updating x and y position. In this case, velocity x is zero, so it's only moving in the y direction. All right, now if I run the program, you can see the snake is moving downwards. And if I go back up and I change this to zero and I make velocity x negative one, we can expect the snake to go to the left. And there you go. The snake just moved left. All right, let's set this back to zero. So now the snake is not moving because velocity x and velocity y are both zero. So there is no change in position. All right, now that we can make the snake move, we want to be able to control the snake using arrow keys. So I want the snake game to listen to key events. So for that, I'm going to implement key listener. And for the key listener, we need to override three methods. So in Visual Studio Code, if I just hover over this and click on quick fix, add unimplemented methods, and I scroll down, 
you can see we have three methods that we need to implement. In our case, we just need the key press. So I'm just going to take this and move it up here. Let's format this. And we do not need the rest of this. So do not need. And I'm just going to get rid of this and get rid of this. All right. So we just need to define these methods. We don't need to put anything inside. We just need to define them. We only care about the key press. So that's whenever you press on a key. So let's get rid of this piece of code. And over here, let's define the four keys that we need. So up, down, left, and right. So if e dot get key code is equal to key event dot vk underscore up. This means that we press the up key. I'm going to set velocity x to zero and velocity y to negative one. Else, if e dot get key code is equal to key event key event dot vk down velocity x will still be zero, but velocity y is going to be one. Else, if e dot get key code is equal to key event dot vk left velocity x will be negative one and velocity y will be zero else if e dot get key code is equal to key event dot vk right velocity x will be positive one and velocity y will be zero all right so now we have our key press defined now we need to make the game panel or the snake game listen to the key presses. So let's scroll up and within our constructor, I'm going to do add key listener this. And we want our snake game to be the one listening for key presses. So I'm going to do set focusable to true. And then I'm going to go back to app.java and do snake game dot request focus so now our snake game is going to be the one listening for the key presses all right now let's run our program and now let's make the snake go down right up left down right and so on so the snake is able to move but we have one problem and that is the snake is able to move backwards Right, so if it goes up, it shouldn't be able to move down. Otherwise, it will run into its own body. So to fix that, we just need to make sure that the snake is not already heading in the opposite direction. So I'm going to put an velocity y is not equal to one. And for moving down, we need to make sure velocity y is not equal to negative one. Moving left, velocity x not equal to 1. And moving right, velocity x not equal to negative 1. All right, so now if I run our program and I press down, I cannot press up to go back up. All right, so now that we have the snake moving, let's have the snake eat the food and grow its body. All right, so for the snake's body, we need an array list to store all of its segments. So each part is a tile. So I'm going to use an array list. So over here, array list, tile, let's call it snake body. And then within our constructor, snake body is equal to new array list tile. All right, now that we have an array list to store all the snake's body parts, let's create a function to detect collision between the snake's head and the food. So down here, let's define a function called collision, and it's going to take two tiles, tile one 
and tile 2. And to determine if two tiles are colliding, it's very simple. We just need to check their X and Y positions. So if they are in the same X and Y position, that means they are both in the same tile. So I'll return tile1.x is equal to tile2.x and tile1.y is equal to tile2.y. And we're going to use the same function for detecting whether the snake has also collided with its own body. So within the move function, let's add this check. So this is for eating the food. If collision snake head food, we are going to add a new segment to the snake's body. So snake body dot add new tile food dot x food dot y and then we are going to call place food and then one more thing we need to do is in our draw function we need to draw each body part of the snake so this is the snake's head and then I'm going to scroll down a bit let's draw the snake body and we are going to iterate through the array list for the snake body. Tile snake part is equal to snake body dot get I. And then we are going to draw a rectangle for that snake part. So G dot fill rect snake part dot x times tile size snake part dot y times tile size and then the width is tile size and the height is also tile size all right now let's run our program and if we collide with the food you can see we are eating the food and the segments are there because the color is green but we are not moving any of the snake's body parts so we need to define this in the move function all right so to move the snake body we need to make sure that it moves along with the head so i'm going to move all the tiles within the snake body before i move the head and the reason is, if I move the head first, the next tile, which is the first member of the snake body, it's not going to know where to go, right? Because we are following the leader, which is the snake head. So to resolve this, I'm going to iterate backwards on the array list. And for each part, it is going to copy the X and Y position of the part that came before it. So therefore, we are basically saying, each tile needs to catch up to the one before it before the snake head can move. So let's move the snake body. Oh, should be snake body. And I'm going to iterate backwards. Int i is equal to snake body dot size minus one. I greater than or equal to zero. I minus minus. So we're going to get the tile for the snake's part. So tile snake part is equal to snake body dot get i. So if i is equal to zero, this means this is the first member of the snake body, the one that comes right after the snake head. We are going to do snake part dot x and set it to snake head dot x snake part dot y is equal to snake head dot y otherwise we are going to have it copy the x and y position of the body part that's before it so let's get the body part before it tile prev snake part is equal to snake body dot get I minus one snake part dot x is equal to prev snake part dot x snake part 
dot y is equal to prev snake part dot y. So now we are moving the snake's body along with the head. All right, now let's run our program. So when the snake touches the food, it eats the food and it grows by one tile. And you can see the body is moving along with the snake's head. All right, so now that we can grow the snake, we need to check for game over conditions. So there are two situations for game over. One is the snake collides with its own body or the snake collides against the walls. All right, let's implement the game over conditions. So over here, I'm going to add a new variable called game over, and I'm going to set this to false by default. And then within our move function, let's add the game over conditions. So let's start with the first one, and that is the snake collides with its own body. So I'm going to iterate through all the body parts of the snake. Tile snake part is equal to snake body dot get i. So if we collide with the snake head, so if collision snake head snake part, I'm going to set game over to true. And then within action performed, which is our game loop, if game over, I'm going to do game loop dot stop. So this will end the game right there. So let's run a program. So we're going to eat the food and grow the snake body so that when it collides with itself, the game should end. Okay, there you go. So the game loop has stopped and the snake is no longer moving. All right, now let's add the other condition and that is the snake hits one of the four walls. So over here, if snake head dot x times tile size is less than zero, that means the x position past the left wall or snake head dot x times tile size is greater than board width. This means that the X position of the snake has gone past the right side of the screen or snake head dot Y times tile size is less than zero. This means that the snake has gone up past the screen or snake head dot Y times tile size is greater than board height. So the snake has gone down past the screen. We are going to set game over to true. So let's format this. Highlight and shift tab. Okay. Now let's run our program. Okay, now if I eat the food and I go down, you can see game over. And then if I run the program again and go to the left, game over. So I can't move anymore. So let's make this more obvious by putting the word game over here. And actually, let's also keep track of the score. So let's do that in the draw function. All right, so within our draw function, let's scroll down. And I'm going to draw the score and the text for game over. So I'm going to do g dot set font new font Arial font dot plane sixteen. So if game over, I'm going to set the color to color dot red and g dot draw string game over. And let's also put the score. So string dot value of 
And the score is just going to be the length of the snake body. So how many times you've eaten the food. So snake body, not size. And then I'm going to set the X position to be tile size minus 16. And the Y position will be tile size. Else, let's just uh, tell the user what their score is. So g.draw string score plus string.value of snake body.size tile size minus 16 and tile size. Okay, now let's run our program. Okay, so now you can see the text for score on the top left. And now if I eat the food, score increments by one, two, and then let's try to get game over. And there you go. So game over and our score is five. All right, so now there's one more thing I want to quickly show you, and that is uh, I'm going to get rid of the grid lines. So let's comment this out. And you can draw the rectangles with borders. So just take this for food, and I'm just going to copy and paste that here. And this will be fill 3D rect. And then I'm going to add one more parameter, true. And let's also do the same thing for the snake head. So fill 3D rect, true. And let's actually comp out these two. Okay. And then finally for the snake body, I'm going to copy and paste this. Let's comp this out. And then let's rename this. So fill 3D rect, and then let's pass in true. All right, now let's run our program. So now we have a border around our tiles. So if I have the snake eat the food and grow its segments, you can see each part is divided by the border. And we have a fully functional game of snake. So if this tutorial worked for you, make sure you give the video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.